Hey there, welcome back to MI Tesla Guy. Tesla has released the 2023 holiday update and I am going to give you all the information you need to know about it. So let's dig right in. As you may know, if you've had a Tesla for any period of time, they tend to drop a bigger than normal software update around the holiday season, usually around Christmas, New Year's. It just continues to blow my mind that you can get new features, you can get new apps, you can have new things added to your vehicle, and it all just comes over the air. Just an update, just like if you were to update your iPhone or Android phone. Huge shout out and a huge thank you to the software development team at Tesla, both those who work on the app for our phones and those that work on the software updates for the cars. Please know that the vast majority of us very, very much appreciate what you do, especially since we know you're putting in all this time, not just throughout the year, but especially around the holidays. And I'm gonna guess you'd like to be spending time with your family, just like the rest of us would. So without further ado, let's get right in to this year's holiday update. So I'm gonna go through these in no particular order. Just so you know, I'm not putting them in an order of what I consider the best or the worst or anything like that. We're gonna go through them, uh, just kind of in the order that they came in on our Model Y. And then I will also cover the um, additional ones that we were able to get in our Model X because I think those are very important for two reasons. One, it is the other form factor of vehicle, right? The X and the S are a lot alike and the three and the Y are a lot alike. And then there's also that our Model X is a 2023 and it has vision only. As you can see, because it's a holiday update, it's only fitting that we have Santa mode turned on. If you're not familiar how to do that, you can just press your right scroll wheel button and use the voice command, ho, ho, ho. First up is gonna be the custom lock sounds. So to get there, you just click on your menu here and you go to toy box, assuming you don't have that down here already. And you're gonna be, as you see here, it says entertainment, we're in the toy box. First item here is boom box and that's where it is. So it's on the lock sound and You've got a whole bunch of choices here, an old school horn, applause, a quack, chirp, clown horn. I'll let you play around with those. The other thing is USB um, is what I have right now. So I have a fun one and I will just share that with you real quick. So here's what mine does now. Bye, Felicia. So to have it show up here on USB, obviously you've got to have the USB stick in the Sentry Mode USB hub, which are mine on a 22, Model Y is in the glove box over there, kind of up there. And same thing in our Model X. So just a real quick plug, you've probably heard me mention Joe, I've reviewed several of their products on this channel. They have this uh, USB hub thing here. This one where you see the little icon for the camera, that's for your sentry mode. I don't know if that's showing up on there. Um, but then you've got these other two spots and this actually is a very, very small slim line. So small that my fingers um, have trouble grabbing onto it. But that's where I put my light shows and my custom lock sound. So I just wanted to show you that real quick. I'll put a link to this product in the description down below if you want to. I've got a discount code that you can use to uh, get a little bit off. And so to be able to take advantage of that USB thing and put your own custom one on there, you just need to remember whatever sound file you're using, you need to make sure when it's put on the USB stick, the name of it is lockchime.wave, and that will let you do a custom sound. And the next one is the change to the light show feature. Similar to the custom lock sound, you just go to the toy box. In here, you would go to light show, and there's a few things that are different now. One, if you go to schedule light show, um, you're actually getting, there's a new one called the arrival. It is pretty cool. I encourage you to go ahead and try that out. But the other one, which I really love about this is you can have more than one custom light show at a time. So the Arrival, Old Lang Syne, and Carol the Bells, these top three are ones that come with it. But if you see here, I've got a bunch of them. I've got the Imperial March from Star Wars. I got the James Bond theme show, Mario Brothers. Um, I got Pentatonix doing Sleigh Ride, a Christmas one. And then I've got the theme song from the TV show, The Office. And I will drop a link down below, teslalightshows.io. They have a ton of these custom light shows and they have a lot of good resources. So I do actually have all my custom light shows and my custom lock sound on that one little USB drive. You used to have to just do one light show at a time. I think a lot what people did who had multiple custom light shows is they just had a bunch of different USB sticks. I really like that as an additional feature because as you can see, I'm taking advantage of it already and I can't wait to add more. All right, next up is that they have added Apple Podcasts to as an app. Yes! 
okay, we're, we're pretty much all in the <laughs> the Apple uh, ecosystem, other than our kids who use Chromebooks. And we've all got iPhones, iPads, that kind of thing. Apple Music was one that got added last year in the holiday update. And this year they added Apple Podcasts. And you can see how excited I am about that already because it is right here. That is the icon you want to look for. It's not going to be down in your, I call this kind of the quick access tray. And then I call this the app drawer. Those are my terms. I don't know that they're universal terms, but it's not going to be down here by default for you. So if you do want that, you'll want to click there and then you will um, actually see this icon, the Apple podcast icon up in here. And of course, then you just, you'd press and hold and you can bring it down there if you use that. I I find myself listening to podcasts more than I do music lately. I really, really like Apple Podcasts. So I'm very, very happy to see this. Now, in case you're wondering how to get that set up, you'll click here. That'll bring you to a QR code. You've got to scan and go to the website. I'm going to go ahead and log in and you will get a screen that shows something like this. And then you click allow. And then it should show up in here in just a moment. There you go. So it's in there. If I had to rank them, I would say that is my favorite feature that got added. And I know it seems like a minor thing, but I, I listen to podcasts a lot. So that was my favorite thing. Now, I feel like no Tesla holiday update would be complete without something that has to do with games. So let us go ahead and go to the app drawer and we are going to go to arcade for games. And we've got a new game, which is Castle Doombad. This one, it does say requires a game controller. I don't know much about the game. Um, the screen looks pretty cool, uh, but it's just cool to have options. I mean, now we're up to, I don't know, we got a lot of them here now. One of the most fun is Beach Buggy Racing. And the cool thing about this one is now they have some new vehicles you can choose from. The Cybertruck is now in there and the Unplugged Performance I believe it's called Dark Helmet, that one that they raced to Pike's Peak with. That is now also a vehicle choice that can be unlocked in the game. So always good to see more options for entertainment. The next one is that uh, they have automatic 911 calls now, and that's just that the vehicle will call 911 if an accident triggers the airbags. It will give a countdown timer, and you will be allowed to cancel that before the call is placed if you don't need to call 911. But just another option in there, you know, Tesla has a big focus on safety and that's another one that has a focus on safety. Okay, next up is speed cameras on your route and navigation will now include symbols along the route to show speed cameras, stop signs and traffic lights. Now keep in mind, this is only if you are actually navigating somewhere. If you're just driving or sitting still like I am here, it's not gonna show you all these signs that are in the area. Um, but you can see, hopefully you can see brief footage here of a stop sign. And then you can see the symbol for the traffic lights as well. And I don't know how many it shows you at a time. Uh, you can see that I can kind of see three at a time. Those are all in relatively close proximity to each other. I'm guessing that it, has, it shows you, you know, the ones that are on your route within the next maybe mile or two. Now, if you want to make sure this shows up on your car you've got to go down here to the menu and then you go to navigation and you want to make sure that online routing right here that that is selected and of course I'm in our model Y right now so the menu may look slightly different and a model S or X it should look the same in the three but either way you're going to go to the menu navigation and then just make sure online routing is on Okay, so the next one is the trip planner on mobile app. Like you can do trip planning in the car, but now you can do it in the mobile app. Let me go ahead and just show you here real quick. And I wanted to navigate to the Somerset collection, which is a mall on the east side of Michigan that has a Tesla gallery that currently happens to have a Cybertruck on display. I've not seen it. But if I wanted to go there, I would click there and before you would just have this kind of screen show up where it shows you, oh, you need to stop in Lansing very briefly, which makes sense since my car is only at 47% battery. But you can actually click this set battery percentage and set the battery percentage if you want. It defaults to wherever your car is now. One of the things you can do now is you can actually click edit trip and then you can add a stop. Um, let's say we want to stop in Okemos, Michigan. 
And of course that's on the way to Somerset. So we'll move that up there and then we click done. And it will do the routing and everything like that. And then again, you could click send to car. And then we've got it on the car screen. One thing I do want to note is that this does require the Tesla app version 4.27.5 or above if you want to add multiple stops on your trip. It's kind of nice to be able to do that, give you an idea of what the navigation for the car is showing you without having to actually be sitting in your car to do it. Although it is kind of fun to sit in the car and do it. All right, so next up is the ability to have more cameras in the live camera view in the app. Before you try to use it in the app or anything, you've got to go to the little car icon here, go to safety and make sure view live camera via mobile app is turned on. Now let's hop into the app and we'll see if I can show you how it works. If I go to live camera, you should see the cameras. Oh, hey, look, you can see me. I'm waving at the camera. And you got all four of those. And of course you can pick which one you want. If you want just the front one, you can pick the front one. I love having the four view there where you quick click the uh, little box with the four rectangles in it. But now you've got your B pillar cameras. So there you go. Yeah, see how wide that is? Kind of love that view. You've almost got no blind spot from a coverage standpoint. Um, I have not seen this change inside of the car sentry mode footage. You still only see the four in that, but I'm hoping they'll bring this to that at some point. Maybe someday they'll maybe even shrink these feeds down a little bit more so you can fit all six in there. I, I do think that's a lot to put on one little screen. Next up, we have the automatic blind spot camera. Uh, as you probably have seen a lot of time, you have the ability to turn that on. If I were to turn on my turn signal, you'll see I've got the blind spot camera that comes up automatically. That's the left, that's the right. But what you can do now is it will actually kind of flash a little bit of red in one of the corners to let you know that there is a vehicle in your blind spot. Now, if you're already looking at the camera, you probably can see that vehicle that's in your blind spot, but every little bit matters. To make sure you have this feature turned on, you click your little car icon there, autopilot right there, automatic blind spot camera. All right, we're coming into the home stretch the autopilot suspension. You can be suspended from using autopilot and improper usage of it uh, by you or another driver of your vehicle uh, receiving five forced autopilot disengagements will cause you to lose autopilot for I believe it is a week now and I've had a couple of people confirm that. Now I think it's important to understand the definition of forced autopilot disengagement. That is a disengagement when the autopilot system disengages is for the remainder of the trip after the driver receives several audio and visual warnings for inattentiveness. Uh, it's really talking about those times where, you know, it says, please pay attention, keep your hands on the wheel. And then it starts flashing at you and then it warns you again and it kicks you out. That would be one forced autopilot disengagement. Now I've Heard all sorts of different opinions on this and amount of torque you've got to put on the wheel and different people have different experiences. And I want to be very fair to those experiences. I do not pretend like everybody's experience with this is the same as mine, but I will just tell you, I've never really had a problem with this. I usually hold my wheel on the sides or kind of the side of the bottom. And I have found that just the weight of my arm holding onto it causes enough torque on the wheel that I don't have a problem. Maybe you don't like to hold the wheel that way. I'm not commenting on any of that. Your experience is going to be your experience, but my experience is that I have not really had a problem with the way that I hold the wheel. Here's the over the air recall. I'm not going to bore you with the recall information, whether recall is even the right word. Personally, I do not think it is, but the NHTSA seems to not have any other word they can use for it. But this was a result of their investigation into autopilot over the past two or three years. And the short version is not much had to change, but this is what Tesla agreed to with the NHTSA and they implemented it with just an over the air update. That's what I would call it. Nobody had to take their car into a Tesla service center or get anything done. It all came over the air. But the gist of what happened with it is that the um, driver monitoring is more sensitive. I will agree with that. Interestingly enough, I've only really noticed it being more sensitive uh, right away. Like right when I engage autopilot within the first five or 10 seconds, it's already given me a warning of paying attention and stuff like that. And now it puts the warning kind of more right here on the screen. And after that 
first one or two times, I really haven't found it to be more sensitive. The one thing I would just put in there, even if you're upset about it, which I know a lot of people are, and, and I think that's valid, I would just encourage you to direct your disappointment and your frustration at the NHTSA because I have a very strong feeling that Tesla would not have done this if it were not for uh, the NHTSA investigation. And last but not least, there are what they are calling minor updates. So the first up is that you can now shuffle within your playlists and albums on the Tidal Music Service. In Apple Music and Spotify, you can show your account profile image to indicate which account you're using for each one. And when you use the controls to search on the touchscreen, which is kind of going here, and then you go up to search, the results now include links to entries in the owner's manual, in addition to results with the vehicle settings. So that you search the vehicle map for charging locations, you can now filter between two charging speeds. Three lightning bolts will show locations with more than 70 kilowatts, and one lightning bolt shows locations with 70 kilowatts or less. So if we go to here, you got one lightning bolt, that would be 70 kilowatts or less, or three. I personally have it only on three, but let's just see. Now you see a couple more show up, some gray ones that let you know that they're slower. So those are the miscellaneous changes. All right, the next one, which is getting a lot of attention, is the Park Assist upgrade for those vehicles who has Tesla Vision. So that would be pretty much everything made within the past year, year and a half. And this would be in our Model X. This is not something our Model Y has currently. The vehicles who get it right now are those that are Tesla Vision only. So those that do not have ultrasonic sensors. Our Model Y has ultrasonic sensors, but our Model X does not. So what this is, is the Tesla Vision Park Assist now displays a high fidelity 3D representation of the world around the vehicle. If you want to turn the chimes on, you would go into the menu here, you go to safety down here, and then you can go to park assist chimes somewhere here. Uh, park assist chimes right there. I don't like them, so I'm not turning them on for my profile and my wife's car. Don't really think of it as like a 360 bird's eye view like you'll see in some cars that have a lot of cameras. It is basically the cameras taking what they're seeing around them and then the computer itself is rendering that. So let me just, I'm gonna pull up in front here. Okay. So see that, it's actually showing the lines for the parking. Um, it's showing that my reindeer are... Now, what's interesting is see how it says stop, and then if you were to look outside, I'm gonna have him raise his camera up a little bit. You can see there's a sidewalk there. My guess is it's seeing the sidewalk and almost representing it as the building in front. But again, I don't see this as a substitute for using your eye and eyeballs. It's just something to help. Um, so if, if you look to the left, you'll see the car. Hello. There's the car that I'm seeing on the screen. And then just look back straight out again. Um, I'll, I'll try and go find something else here too. So let me go ahead and put it in reverse. If I back up and what's interesting is you can see the parking line. Um, it's not picking up on the, war, the one on the right side, but the parking lines in this parking lot are not really that good, in case you're wondering. All right, so let's see what it shows if I want to park in between our two friends there. All right, it's very hard to do and record at the same time, in case you're wondering. All right, there you go. So we got two cars out front. He most likely can see that. And you got the lines. I pull in. You know what? It is rendering the sidewalk. You can see it right now. So if you see right there where that line is, that's the front of those cars. It's the sidewalk. So I come in, turn around, and I'm sorry, the steering wheel. This is where the yoke would be better. The steering wheel is getting in the way of showing you. And it wants me to stop. Now, I would say this is about where I should be stopping. I'm looking outside for the sidewalk. Um, right there. Uh, I'm not on the sidewalk in case you're wondering. So there definitely are still, um, it still needs a little bit of work, but nonetheless, I do think this is helpful. And I think the name of it of Park Assist is a true name, not, it's not called Park Perfect. It's not called Close Your Eyes and Park. It's called Park Assist. And I do think it helps uh, show you because where it's rendering those cars next to us, 
I would say is about spot on as far as how far they are apart. So that is the high fidelity park assist. All right, and the next one has to do with rear passenger headphones. This is really cool. Now passengers in the back seat can listen on wireless Bluetooth headphones when watching shows or playing games on the rear touchscreen. So the rest of the people in the vehicle can continue to listen to music or whatever they're listening to up front. And the folks who are watching something or playing something on the back screen can have Bluetooth headsets on. So I brought my trusty Bose Quiet Comforts. All right, so to do that, you go to the app launcher, rear display. There's actually a button for that. And this shows me the rear display. So it matches the back display. See, he even changed it. He changed it to games and it showed it up here. I can lock the back display, but this is not about the rear display. So app launcher, rear display, and then I go to settings and then add new device and then start. There they are. Found them super quick. All right, so they are now connected. So I'm gonna hand these back to my son. There he is. He's got them on. Looks like he's gonna watch a YouTube video back there. All right, he's watching a YouTube video on the SAT question everyone got wrong. Is it coming through the headphones? Yep. All right, so he's coming through the headphones. I'm gonna get out of rear display and I'm gonna try and play music up front. All right, I'm turning it down, just so you know, because it's, um, I don't wanna get a copyright strike. I'm playing some Christmas music by Pentatonix. So do you still hear it on the, the uh, headphones? Yeah, I don't hear any of the music at all. He doesn't hear any of the music. Now let me turn you around and I'll prove that I'm playing the music up front. All right there. Oh, come all ye faithful by Pentatonix. Here's just a quick listen to it because I don't want to copyright strike. Angels. All right, there you go. That's the proof. So uh, road trips just got better. All right. And one of the unique things in the Model X is that you can now play games on the rear screen. So my assistant, my son Matt's gonna show us here because I can't record and do that at the same time. So basically to start a game on the rear touch screen, you open the arcade app and you pick a game. Hopefully one that'll work back here. I pick Fallout Shelter. Play game. All right, so there you go. Fallout Shelter starting up. Um, all right, let's go ahead and exit out of that. So press back um, and then go to uh, media, like watching a movie. And then, oh, interesting. This one did lose Disney Plus because we haven't used it yet. So if you have not heard, some people are showing that once they get the holiday update, they lose the Disney Plus app. And I will, I will show you here in a moment how you can get that back. But for now, I guess go ahead and click on YouTube. And there you go. Well, apparently Mr. Beast and Simon Cowell is where it's at. All right, so we'll go back to the home screen and that just shows you you can watch stuff, play games and everything on the back screen. Very cool. All right, so in case you're wondering what I have heard about getting Disney Plus back is you go in to the browser right here. Sorry, I'm in the Model X right now, so I'm not quite as used to it as I am my Model Y. Um, all right, Disney Plus, we'll just do a search, Disney Plus login. So apparently if you go to Disney Plus, it actually brings up the app. So I haven't even logged in, but it, it actually brings up the app. I'm not at the Disney Plus website. It just went right to the app. This is the first time we've used it in this car. Some people have said that if you have already used it in your vehicle, then you won't have Disney Plus go away. And I don't think we've used it in the Model X. So that might explain that. I am going to go ahead and get logged in here real quick, just so I can kind of prove the point. I will be back with you shortly. Okay, welcome back. So I got logged in. Um, this is the Disney Plus app. So in theory, when I close out of here, and I think if I go here now and I go to theater, now the Disney Plus app is back. I'm gonna hop in the back seat here real quick and see if it is on back there as well. And as you can see right there, it is right in the center near the top. Now, one thing I forgot to mention about the gaming from the back and watching stuff from the back, you actually, if you start a game on the front screen, you can actually join the game that you started on the front screen from the back screen. That's kind of cool. And it's not just me saying it's cool. My son actually said it was cool too. Well, there you have it. That is the 2023 holiday update for Teslas. 
Hopefully you got a good mix of all the different things that came with this holiday update. I personally like the holiday update. Uh, I've seen some who like it a lot. I've seen some who have complained that, oh, there really wasn't much this year. It's not all that impressive. I think that's gonna be in the eye of the beholder. I personally like a lot of the updates that were added to it, but that doesn't mean you will. So uh, if you've got the holiday update, I'd love for you to drop your experience uh, in the comments down below. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please throw me a like uh, and consider subscribing. Helps out the channel. And let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.